to follow, but I'll try. Um, I have a little resurrection story since, you know, if you come here all the time, you know we took the jokes away for Lent, but it's back. <laughs> Before you clap, you got to hear it. <laughs> a man, his wife, and his cranky mother-in-law went on vacation to the Holy Land. While they were there, sadly, the mother-in-law passes away. The undertaker tells him, well, you have a couple of options. You can ship her back home for $5,000. You can bury her here in the Holy Land for $150. The man goes into deep thought and then says, I think we're going to ship her back home for $5,000. And he said, the undertaker is kind of puzzled. And he says, well, why would you want to spend $5,000 when you can bury her here for $150 in the Holy Land? The man said, well... A man died here 2,000 years ago. He was buried, and three days later, he came back. <laughs> I can't take that chance. <laughs> My apologies to all the mother-in-laws here today. Good morning. I want to welcome each and every one of you for coming to celebrate Easter with us here at the Church of St. Luke and St. Peter. Now, I know some of you came today because that's what you do every Sunday. Some of you came because that's what you do on Easter Sunday. Some of you maybe came under duress because somebody made you come. <laughs> and others came to hear the resurrection story, which we heard beautifully from the children. And so you will not be disappointed. And some of you are here this morning, and maybe, maybe, you're not quite sold or really don't understand the whole resurrection thing. And you're not alone. A poll taken a couple of years ago showed that a third of the American citizens are not sure or don't believe in the resurrection. It's worse in some other parts of the world. More than half of the people don't, be don't really believe it. And even the disciples at first didn't believe. They weren't sure what was going on, nor Mary Magdalene. That really, that beautiful Sunday morning. I, myself, have family members who are skeptical of the whole resurrection now, over the years, there's been much debate about over Jesus' death and resurrection. Many secular scholars have studied the resurrection and try to claim that it is false. So I'm going to give you the top four arguments why they are against the resurrection. Number one, the wrong tomb. I mean, you can laugh at that, but I didn't write it. The theory is that that morning of, of the Easter, the ladies, it was dark, they came to... Uh, anoint the body, and they show up at the wrong tomb. Well, they run back, they grab the disciples, they run back in the wrong tomb. Well, I've gotten lost before, I'm sure a lot of us have, and I'm not trying to deny that what their experience was very traumatic, but if they went to the wrong tomb, wouldn't the Romans and the Pharisees just have moved the stone, rolled out the body, and said, okay guys, Here's his body right here. You guys went to the wrong tomb. But they didn't because there was no body. Number two, the followers were so filled with grief that they hallucinated that they saw Jesus. Well, maybe. I've been around traumatic loss. Maybe they suffer from lack of sleep. Maybe they had a little bit too much wine that night. I don't know. The problem with that is that Jesus in his resurrected body appeared to not just these guys, these women, but he appeared to hundreds of people over 40 days. He ate with them, talked to them, sat with them. He, so these hallucinations all of a sudden stop the minute he ascends into heaven. So again, pretty silly theory. Number three, the fainting theory. And this is the one that has gotten the most traction over the past century. The theory is that Jesus, after having been severely beaten, hanging on the cross, totally blacked out because of loss of blood, they thought he was dead, and they mistakenly put him in a tomb alive. It has happened in real life, but it is really kind of hard to believe that Jesus just fainted, and in as weak a state as he was, got up, rolled that stone, walked all the way to Jerusalem, and appeared to all the disciples in that state. David Friedrich Strauss, who's not a Christian, he is a secular historian, 
wrote, it is impossible that a person who has walked half dead out of a tomb, who was weak, ill, and wanting medical treatment, who required bandaging, strengthening, was still last yielded to his suffering, but eventually died, could have given the disciples the impression that he was the conqueror over death and the grave. Not likely. Number four, the body was stolen. His disciples stole the body of Jesus and made up the whole story about him being resurrected just so they could continue on the master's teachings. The problem with this theory is that scripture often shows us that even the disciples never really understood what Jesus was talking about most of the time when he told them over and over, I'm going to die, but I'm going to be back. And even that night, after it happened, they would go up and hide like cowards in a room. So do we really think these guys would have stolen the body and come up with this great deception story? Keep in mind, these men also had families. And nobody recanted their story after all was said and done. And nobody said they stole the body. And again, how would they have figured out to get past the guards, move the stone, and keep the story alive, even when they were being arrested, beaten, and slaughtered by the hundreds, men and women. Because that seems absurd, some historians then said, well, wait a minute, what really happened wasn't that the disciples stole the body, but it was the authorities. They took the body and hid it, so the disciples couldn't steal the body. Well, again, aren't we just now trying not to believe? The authorities took the body. If they took it, then Christianity, as Christianity began to spread all over Jerusalem and all over the world, well, the area, wouldn't they just destroy that whole movement by just bringing the body and showing it to everybody? So these are the top four reasons why secular people are trying to deny the whole resurrection. And as you can see, none of them really hold water. Here's four reasons why it did happen. Well, the Old Testament prophesies over and over that the Messiah will come, die, and he will be brought back from the dead. When you get a chance, read Isaiah 53, which says that whole thing in the Old Testament. Jesus taught them, and at least four times he told them over and over, I'm going to suffer, die, be buried, and come back from the dead. So biblically speaking, you have the Old Testament that testifies that what's going to happen. You have Jesus' own teaching, I will die and I will come back to life. And then you have the Apostle Paul, who at one time said, you know, most of, he appeared to over 500 people. And most of them were still alive at that time. So just ask him. I'm not making this up. There's historical evidence for it. As I've already said, these men were cowardly. They weren't also the sharpest knives in the drawer because over and over they kept hearing this and didn't understand. And yet, something happened to them after the resurrection. Take Peter. He had denied Jesus three times and became a coward and went up to hide with all the others. Then this same man stands up 60 days later at Pentecost and preaches his guts out which makes all the powers that be at the time really angry at him. And they said, quit teaching about Jesus. We can do the same thing to you we did to him. But what does Peter do? Does he say, oh, okay. No. He's like, judge for yourself what's right and wrong. But as for us, for me, we can't help speaking about what we have seen and what we have heard. Jesus' family believed he was God, his own mother who gave birth to him, and his half-brother, James. When he, James was out there talking about Jesus, they took him up on a mount and threatened him. He says, if you keep it up, we're going to throw you off. And he says, I'm not going to stop. They threw him off. He broke his legs, and then the, the mob came and finished him off. Now, James could have just said when he was threatened, you know, you're right, it's not true, and he could have just simply walked away but he didn't. Also, the women were the ones who discovered the empty tomb. Now, with us today, it's not a big deal, but in the first century, a woman's testimony 
was not admissible in court or anywhere. If a woman saw a crime and she was the one who came to testify, they wouldn't accept that testi testimony at all. So the fact that the women were the first to testify tells us that others must have witnessed Jesus alive after his death or it would not have been believed. Outside of the Bible, some secular historians in the first century wrote about the resurrection. Josephus, Pliny the Younger, they all wrote about it. And these were not Christians. Beloved of God, the empty tomb may be difficult to understand, but there's no reason not to believe it. And what points to? It points to a God who cares so much for us that he enters our life and he shows us how to live it. I believe in the resurrection because I've seen the God of resurrection at work in people. I've seen the risen Christ raise people from the death of despair to joy in new life. Ultimately, I believe historically, biblically, and in every way that it is true. Jesus' resurrect resurrection means death has been defeated. The resurrection brings life to those who believe and hope that there is life after death. That we don't just live life and it's over. There's more. The resurrection proves that everything Jesus taught was true. That he really was God in the flesh. God in the form of a human being. So why do I believe in the resurrection? I believe in it because it has stood the test of time. Look at this church today. And over the centuries, how many people come to celebrate. But supremely, I believe in it because I have seen it in the life of others. And I have experienced it myself. Which is why I can stand here this morning and say to you, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you today for that which we cannot understand, but which we can appreciate and experience. Pour out upon us, Father, a renewed faith in your power and the peace that comes with hope in you and in the resurrection of Christ our Lord. Amen.